vitamins. You know, a few years ago, if you said supplements, people were like, oh, that's expensive urine. Well, that's true if you're talking about vitamins and minerals, but how many people do I know who during the pandemic started taking vitamin D, getting some sunshine? What do you mean to, by that's true if you're talking about vitamins and minerals? Well, I think when we hear the word supplements, it gets confusing for people. I actually am wishing for a better word because when people hear supplements they think vitamin minerals isn't that just expensive urine yeah, but it's the, not your it's, body absorbs it if you take it with fat and protein and carbohydrates right and and if you over ingest uh fats uh, excuse me water soluble vitamins you will excrete some but yeah. then there's a whole category of supplements like food supplements protein etc and then there's an entire category of compounds that we call supplements that have nothing to do with proteins fats or carbohydrates vitamins or minerals things that are known to have very potent effects. There's a reason why the National Institutes of Health has a division now simply for these types of studies. Right. Things like ashwagandha can potently reduce cortisol. Shouldn't be used long-term, but in the short term, this can be very beneficial for people, especially late day, because late day peaks in cortisol, not good for us. We know this, correlated with depression, anxiety, insomnia, which then has a cascade of negative effects. Things like creatine, not just for, we think creatine muscles, and indeed, it brings water into the muscles and make you stronger. Most of the data, clinical data on creatine are to enhance forebrain function. It's yeah, one because it's a nootropic. It's a nootropic. It post concussion, post surgery, postpartum depression, headache. I mean, fish oils. So there's this whole category of things that in theory you could get from food, but the volumes that you would have to eat and the sourcing is just impractical. Uh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's rhodiola rosea, which is, you know, reducing cortisol. There's interesting data on that. And then there's the stuff we've talked about before about hormone augmentation. But for the typical person out there nowadays, I think they're thinking about, well, what can I do? What can I eat? How can I take better care of myself? Am I magnesium deficient or not? Probably not. But will taking some additional magnesium help me sleep? Yes. Will it hurt me? No. Well, are you, you know, magnesium? Stop, if, are you magnesium deficient? Get your blood work done. Right. Like, if you want to find out that, get your blood work done. Everyone should have their blood work. But done. what I was curious about, like, why you were saying that it's just expensive urine. Like, oh the, no, no. This this is what other people say. Right, but, say. but they're wrong. No, this is what like you know my you know when I was young, I got into this you know training and supplementation early, and people would say, oh, it's just expensive urine. You know, don't spend your money on that. There are certain things like within supplementation, also the foundational supplementation, as I call it, like things like athletic greens, right? Or I guess they call it AG1 now. Things that are in such combinations of herbs and plant-based compounds, like you can't take them one by one. And then other things like magnesiums for sleep or inositol and the data on depression or inositol and insulin sensitivity. You know, the number of people that are out there who are pre-diabetic or type two diabetes, of course, they need to exercise and eat right, but things like inositol can improve insulin. What sensitivity. is inositol? Inositol is it's similar to a vitamin, but it works in a pathway that makes cells more insulin sensitive, which is good. So you can use the glucose and insulin that that you make, so you're not overproducing insulin. Type two diabetes is essentially overproduction of insulin because your cells aren't able to use the insulin that's around, so you crank mm. out more of it. Type one diabetes, lack of insulin from the pancreas. That's why people in Jaff to inject it who have type one diabetes. So things like inositol, I mean, and the list just goes on and on, you know? And so to me, I think the view is changing, I hope, that, you know, the idea previously was that, before the pandemic, frankly, was that supplements are just kind of like, nootropic that or you know it's kind of you don't need it i'm not saying you need it but they are a powerful augment to good sleep good nutrition good training good social connection yeah if you life. want to optimize if you the, want to the optimize. idea of needing it like what do you mean to exist right you don't you could eat mcdonald's and just live like if you want to optimize your health yeah right. supplements are very beneficial very beneficial but i think for you and me it's a it's a it's a duh but i think for a lot of people out there it's they they seem to think that there's something unique about prescription drugs that is makes them better than supplements well that's because